Let's head to the phones and visit with Patrick Svitek of the Texas Tribune. Patrick, good morning. How are you? Morning, John. Thanks for uh, joining us today on the show. Uh, you've been covering a lot of the uh, Ken Paxton uh, going <laughs> goings on. Uh, what's the latest with uh, Ken Paxton and uh, his trial, delay, trial, delay, sure. wh- whatever else is going on? Yeah, so yesterday the prosecutors got their first major victory in, in, in quite some time, honestly. The, uh, the judge uh, up in Collin County, uh, ruled that the trial should be moved out of Collin County. That's where Ken Paxton resides, and that's where the, the prosecutors had argued that Paxton and his allies had waged this kind of campaign to influence public opinion in Collin County. And so along with that order comes a delay in the trial date. It was originally scheduled for May 1st, and they haven't set a new venue yet, but it could be one of those counties surrounding Collin County. I believe there are uh, six counties surrounding it, including Dallas. And so that, you know, that ruling, obviously, uh, a major development and a major win for for prosecutors, but now some uncertainty about uh, where and when exactly that trial is going to happen. Uh, I'm sure the, um, the 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 Paxton team wasn't too happy about this. Were they surprised? Were you know what was this a surprise yeah. ruling? I think it was in some regards. At a, at a court hearing earlier this year, the judge had signaled that he wanted to at least try to move forward with the legal proceedings in Collin County. Um, since then, there was this new exhibit that was submitted, and it apparently uh, concerned the judge. He said so as much in a, a court hearing this week. Now the Ken Paxton uh, team is saying that this exhibit uh, was, was a misdirection ploy, uh, that the judge was, was misled in terms of the impact of this exhibit. For the record, it's a, it's a campaign fundraiser invitation from 2013. Um, and so with that, if that was the basis of the judge's ruling to move the trial out of Collin County, Ken Paxton's uh, lawyers are saying that's a problem, and they're asking the judge now to reconsider that order. They actually filed that motion to reconsider the order uh, just a few hours after he ruled uh, yesterday to move the trial out of Collin County. Well, so uh, this thing's who, – who knows what twist and turns this is yeah. going to take in the future, right? I, I mean, no, nothing is yeah. – nothing certain – uh, when this trial is going to, you know, uh, start, or where it's where it's going to start? Yeah, and this judge, you know, at a hearing this week, he he strictly ordered the both the lawyers and the prosecutors to stop talking to the media, uh, stop making statements to the media, and to only respond in in court in formal filings. He in the past he has shown that he's getting uh, a little fed up with the amount of public attention and media attention surrounding this case, and I think he believed that making it hard, uh, you know, to at least move forward in Collin County at this point. Mm, interesting. Uh, let's take a look at the legislature. Uh, something that um, the the governor is very high on, and it's um, uh, high-quality pre-K funding. He brought it up during the State of the State address, uh, and it said if you're, you know, if we don't do it right, don't do it at all, which, you know, at that point, uh, both the Senate and the House said okay uh, and got rid of funding for high, for his high-quality pre-K plan. Right. Uh, what's the latest? Because I know the governor's not done here, right? He hasn't given up uh, fighting for what he wants, correct? No, and that's a good point. I mean, this is kind of, you know, he's only been in office for uh, a couple of years now, but I think this is kind of a legacy item for him and something he's, he's willing to fight for. And so far, it has not worked out well, this legislative session. Uh, as you pointed out, both the House and the Senate came up with plans for pre-K, and none of them uh, abided by his call to action earlier this session when he asked them to fully fund his uh, what he calls his high-quality pre-K uh, initiative. And so this week he was in Dallas and he said, look, you know, it's clear that the Senate has a plan, the House has a plan, and the governor has a plan, and we're going to be working this out in conference committee. That's when uh, members of both chambers get together and hash out their differences on certain legislation. In this case, it's going to be the budget. And, uh, you know, that that happens typically toward the end of session uh, in May, uh, in late May, potentially. Um, So that's kind of, I think, his, uh, his view on this right now. Um, you know, I think his remarks this week, uh, you know, were, were pretty obvious. Obviously, the next step in this is a conference committee, but it also, I think, was an acknowledgement um, that the House and Senate budgets that, that they're working through right now uh, just did not at all uh, abide by his request earlier this session to fully fund the program. They really, they really gave short shrift to the initiative. Yeah, Patrick, as you know, uh, Dan Patrick and Joe Strauss seem to dominate the headlines. Uh, and yeah. especially during this <laughs> session, they've, they've had a few back and forths uh, during this session. D- do you get any feeling from lawmakers and those that you talk to uh, there at the, the, the Capitol that 
does does the governor have any pull? Does the governor is it you know is there any fire behind you know the the governor's position on things, or is it just all about uh, Dan Patrick and Joe Strauss and appeasing those two right now? Like, how does he fit? Yeah, in? No, I, I think that yeah, I think the governor still still has some juice in that regard. I think that traditionally closer to the end of, of the session, he, he becomes more influential for or the opportunities for him to to become more influential um, increase. Um, but I do think that, you know, you do talk to some lawmakers, um, you know, who are either uh, fed up with the issues he has uh, or irritated by the issues he has chosen to be vocal about in uh, sanctuary cities, pre-K, and the tone he's used on those issues, or, or on the flip side, they're upset that he hasn't weighed in on some other hot-button issues uh, like the bathroom bill. I'm sure that there are some, uh, specifically some leaders in the House, who would love the governor to uh, make his position on that clear so we can kind of move on from this. Yeah, interesting. Uh, let's see, Patrick. Uh, th- this was a, a heated week uh, in Austin. Next week, what are you, what are we uh, hearing about next week? Sure. So the budget debate is going to continue next week. This week, the Senate uh, passed its version of the budget off the floor. Uh, we could see the House version of the budget hit the floor uh, late next week, possibly. And obviously, that that process is going to continue to play out as we discussed before. The the House and the Senate have been pretty far apart. Uh, in their budget proposals, and they're going to have to, you know, go to a conference committee to hash out those differences uh, toward the end of session. And so, uh, the the House budget hitting the floor next week will just be the next the next step in that process. Very interesting, Patrick. We'll visit with you again next week. Uh, anything uh, that you're working on that'll be uh, up on the Tribune uh, anytime soon this weekend? Well, we're keeping an eye on El Paso today. Democratic Congressman there, Beto O'Rourke, is uh, planning to uh, announce that he's running for Senate against Ted Cruz in 2018. Yep. Um, I think that everyone had expected that to happen. But it'll be interesting to see specifically what his message today is to his supporters about why he's doing this and why he believes that uh, Ted Cruz uh, you know, does not deserve uh, re-election in 20, 2018. What's the latest, by the way? I don't know if you've heard anything out of the Castro case. Okay? Because, you know, uh, Joaquin Castro, it was rumored that he was going to look at it. I I don't know if he really jumps into this thing. He's got more to lose than uh, than O'Rourke does. Uh, it, it, it yeah, seems, he does. So. He does have more to lose in terms of his, his perch in Congress right now. Yeah. Um, he has said that he'll make a decision on this by the end of April. Um, I think that most people think that he is less likely to jump in now that O'Rourke is making it official. I think it's been interesting. You've seen this morning and in the past few days on Twitter, the, the crew's uh, allies and staffers have been kind of uh, – needling Castro about not getting in the race, potentially trying to egg him on to maybe get him in. Maybe they can get a fractured Democratic primary then. So we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll have a Democratic primary yeah. bipartisan <laughs> road trip yeah. that we can yeah, all we watch. Can that, yeah. You know, maybe yeah, that'll happen. Need a bus for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick, thank you very much. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. That's uh, Patrick Svitek. TexasTribune.org. Go and visit their website. Check out uh, all the uh, statewide headlines.